Well, turning now to the war in Ukraine, where at least 13 people have been injured following Russian missile strikes overnight. A strike on the southern Ukrainian city of Dnipro injured 10 people, and another three, including children, were hurt in an attack on the southern city of Kherson. This latest strike comes as Ukraine celebrates its 32nd Independence Day. In Kyiv, destroyed Russian tanks and other military hardware have been put on display to mark the occasion. This year's holiday falls exactly 18 months after Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin made no mention of Wagner mercenary group boss Yevgeny Prigozhin during a remote address at the BRICS summit in South Africa this morning. Prigozhin is reported to be among 10 people to have died in a plane crash northwest of Moscow yesterday, according to Russia's civil aviation agency. CBS News foreign correspondent Deborah Pata is following the latest from Ukraine. Caught on camera, unverified footage of the plane tumbling from the sky with a missing wing, then bursting into flames north of Moscow. With unusual speed, Russian aviation authorities announced the mercenary boss was among the 10 people who died in that crash. Wagner social media channels claim the jet was shot down. There's been no official word from the Kremlin, but President Biden said he was not surprised. I mean, not much that happens when Russia is not behind. Kremlin watchers wonder if this was the moment Prigozhin signed his death warrant. That audacious mutiny, an unprecedented challenge to Vladimir Putin. The former convict had a meteoric rise from Kremlin chef to warlord, spreading Russia's influence in Syria and Africa. As a close Putin confidant, he appeared untouchable, even laughing about his inevitable death. We'll all go to hell, but in hell we'll be the best, he jokes. Prigozhin has made his billions plundering natural resources on the African continent. And last year, he came to Putin's rescue in Ukraine, throwing convicted murderers and thieves into the bloody battle for Bakhmut. Now, one of the most striking images of Prigozhin's short-lived mutiny was his forces shooting down a Russian military plane, raising the question at the time, Anne-Marie, surely Putin would never let this go unpunished. Yes, Deborah, I think it's sort of fair to say that a lot of people were surprised but not shocked, I think, um, about what has unfolded. What's the reaction that we're getting from Ukraine and Russia to this crash? Amory, that depends on who you ask. In Ukraine, there is obviously no love lost for Prigozhin. He's regarded as a war criminal. And people believe that that plane was shot out of the sky. Probably they are saying on the orders of the Russian president with comments like Russia never forgives mutinies and it's not the first time they've killed their own. But essentially the question being asked, is this the very, very cold dish of revenge for that audacious march? And that's all over uh, social media, both in Ukraine and in Russia. Some of those questions are also being asked. That plane went down exactly two months to the day of that failed mutiny. And as we mentioned in hmm. our report, those images of Prigozhin's forces shooting down the aircraft were pretty shocking. It was an unprecedented challenge. You know, you mentioned uh, in your report how at, at one point Prigozhin had been taking in convicts uh, into uh, his organization. And I wondered to myself, these would be people you would think would be particularly loyal to him. He got them out of prison. Do we have any idea what's happening to the Wagner group, to the soldiers? It, just where are they now? And it appears as if they would be leaderless. Well, Prigozhin's men made a deal, essentially, to go to Belarus and set up base there. And we've also seen Prigozhin popping up in Africa. In fact, just this week, he supposedly posted a video of him somewhere in an undisclosed location in Africa. No one can verify exactly when it was filmed or where it was filmed. 
because that is essentially his home ground, his hunting ground. And it seemed that Wagner was going to continue spreading Russian influence on the African continent in places like Central African Republic, where Prigozhin has essentially plundered natural resources like gold, diamonds and timber um, in order to make his billions and also fund the organization's participation in that Ukrainian war. They're not fighting in Ukraine. They were given amnesty as part of that deal. But what happens to them now is unclear. But it's also early days because this is still an unfolding story um, and is not over yet. And as a result, and you also hint to it in your story, there is skepticism. Um, you know, we know what was on the plane's manifest, who's supposed to be on that plane, but you can almost guarantee nothing when you're talking about information coming out of Russia. Why are people skeptical? Well, that's exactly the point. We are talking about Russia, where, you know, fact and fiction, very, very difficult to um, separate. And there's always sort of murky stuff surrounding everything. Russian aviation authorities very quickly, unusually, I should point out, because they normally take ages, quickly said that Prigozhin was on that flight and that he was, in fact, dead. But Wagner social media sites didn't want to accept this at first, saying people should wait. But then we started seeing posts coming in the early hours of the morning, um, lauding Prigozhin and another commander who was on that flight. So they seem to have accepted that he is dead. He certainly there's been nothing heard about him. There's been no official comment um, from the Kremlin. So all of this remains mired in this murky Russian, we don't really know what's happening, and maybe we never will, because although an investigation has been promised, that could never really happen. Mm -hmm. Yevgeny Prigozhin himself warned of his possible death after his doomed mutiny, saying it's better to die a hero than a coward and one can't avoid one's destiny. But at the end of the day, he humiliated Putin, shot down Putin's planes, and seemed to get away with it unscathed despite warnings that Putin would not let this happen, Anne-Marie. Right. Deborah Pata, thank you.